Uh, I'm Andy Warfield, uh, co-founder and CEO at Coho. Uh, and now I'm going to tell you about some of our pilot customers, um, some of whom I can even name. Um, so, um, you know, we've, we've been in pilot for about six months uh, at this point. Um, we've, uh, we've had very, very uh, patient and enthusiastic uh, pilot customers. Um, most of the environments that we have gone into, well, all of the environments are large-scale VMware environments, multi-petabyte, <coughs> uh, largely NAS environments. Um, you know, these are some quotes from them. I, I'm not going to read the quotes. Right? Basically, you. you know, these guys uh, um, have them. performance pain, um, are complaining about five-year refreshes, and they like the idea of bringing something in that they can storage vMotion problematic workloads onto <laughs> and get an immediate win. Um, and they like the idea of scaling up over time. Um, I'm going to tell you about one in particular, um, Vital. So this is, this is pretty interesting. We, we tested our um, you know, pitch, right? I think Tiffany was terrified of launching the company uh, not having seen me talk to an audience before. So she made me go to this uh, Stephen Foskett thing. And it's, it's all, uh, like a therapy group. <laughs> it, 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 it was like 40 people in the audience. I think Tiffany was expecting some kind of train wreck, right? She's like, you know, <laughs> wow. is it safe to put him up there? Let's see. He's untested. So I, I go and uh, How can I, you say I, that about me? <laughs> <laughs> you were very good at the thing. But anyway, I got up. I talked to these guys. And um, uh, this guy, Grant, came up at the end of it um, and uh, was super enthusiastic. He's like, I really like this, this solution in that I feel this problem. Right? I've got this, this large-scale regression uh, environment for um, medical imaging software. Uh, it's, it's effectively driving workloads against SQL Server uh, at scale, right? We do updates to the code, and we run a whole bunch of SQL Server-based workloads in VMs overnight. Um, I would love to get this in. I would love to join your pilot, right? So, so we talked to him. Uh, it, it went through to the point of us talking to the, uh, to the storage, uh, or one of the, one of the storage guys over there. And uh, um, the, the, the storage guy that we had as a point of contact um, went through my pitch again and basically called BS on it, right? He so said, I don't believe the performance numbers that you're talking about. Um, he was like really, really angry. We don't have time to take on POCs. Um, and I think finally he decided to take us in to spite me, right? Like I think he decided to do the POC because he wanted to say, I told you so, this thing sucks. <laughs> um, and so we brought the box in, we got it set up, and uh, the experience that they had was that their average runtime per suite uh, against the, uh, the, the FAST 6000 that they're running fell from two hours and, uh, and 12 minutes down to one hour and five minutes um, with no changes other than just plugging the thing in, migrating the VMs onto it. Um, they've scaled to two nodes at this point um, and, uh, and continue to, uh, to be really, really enthusiastic uh, about the system. Um, and so you know, this, this experience has, has, uh, has repeated with a, a couple of... Uh, of the other pilots that we've done, right? People have been pretty, pretty excited about. When you say uh, scale to two nodes, you mean two of the two, two use. Sorry, okay. yeah. yeah. The the network port versus server in the node versus node. I, yeah. I struggle myself with that. <laughs> right. Two uh, boxes. Two boxes. <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, I think I don't even think I have another slide. Um, I think I'm. Yay. Right. Oh, yeah. So. <laughs> Um, I, I think that's probably enough detail, right? We've, we've, we've gone out um, and done a bunch of pilots. The, the pilots have gone remarkably well. We're, we're going to product at the end of the month, and we're very excited to be, uh, to be GAing. And okay. Everybody's biting their nails trying to fix the last bugs. So while, while you're doing a back-end object store, it's not CAS, so you're not deduplicating in the back-end, right? We have um, we've implemented dedupe, but it is not in the GA. And uh, it's not clear where the priorities on DDP are going to land for us right over the next year. Uh, right, the scale and the cost, uh, you know, it's, it's actually much fewer people are asking for it than I expected. People are still, people are still afraid of it for primary storage. They, you know, the, the backup, they have too much right. of the how dedupe affected backup experience yep. to recognize, you know, if mostly you're going to flash, those, most of the, many of those problems disappear. The, the way we do dedupe is cool. Um, if, you, if, if you have a sec for that, um, I mean, I probably don't even need the whiteboard for this. We calculate CRCs to protect data at rest, right? So we cache the CRCs. Um, and we use, the, we use the CRCs as a dedupe hint, right? They're not authoritative in terms of uh, saying the two pieces of data are the same, right? You wouldn't want to do that. Um, but they're, they're a good starting point. And then we use the cores, right, when workload falls off to scan and dedupe. 
right? So we, we take advantage of the data path to reduce a lot of the work that you would have to do in terms of dedupe. And then we step in and do the, the actual meaningful so it's post mapping. It's, it's hybrid, effectively, right? There's a little bit of work on the data path, right? To, to use the CRCs and a data structure that lets you spot potential duplicates, but then it's slightly post process. Okay, uh, you're so not it, doing it in line. So it, it's a weak hash and, and That's check. Right. That's right. As opposed to a strong hash and trust. Yes. Yes. Yeah, and like I said, that's not, in, that's not in the GA. Mm -hmm. um, yeah? With the replication, um, can that be across sites? And that's the other thing that's not in GA. So that's okay. one of our, the two biggest asks we've had on the customer side for next okay. year are remote replication and general purpose NFS. Okay. So. And the snapshots are read-only or read or iterable? Or? Um, you can clone from them. Um, we clone them into VAI. Um, so, so you're you're using the metadata to do X copy, VAI X copy clones. Um, we have a VAI uh, uh, clone hook that maps down onto those. The snapshots right. are doing they're they're implemented internally as effectively like read only snapshots, but you can clone from them, right? So the, oh, okay. So the it's metadata a, in the system, right? It's, it's all, a two step. It's all B tree based, so it's it's super easy to to do the snapshot clones. And then the replication will also be per VM, right? Um, yes, it's, it's per object, yeah. Yeah. So, per object? Well, per, yeah, per sort of aggregate object, per view. Okay, yeah, yeah, because yeah. yeah, in your model, I think of objects as being the slices, not the... Yes, yes, that's <laughs> another terminology. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Here's the one thing. Uh, the, uh, the object is as a variable size or a fixed size? It's variable size. It's a sparse, it's effectively an address space. Right, is the way to think about it. Right? You get the flash device, you create a sparse address space, right? We handle you know the, the mappings uh, in behind that. But th this isn't enough storage, you gotta keep your eye on EMC while we're at it. <laughs> What's the model you use for multi tiering? I mean the question was asked earlier whether I think uh, you keep things in flash and you said you do some data stays in flash. What is I mean, is it like a top down type of thing? Yeah. Or? Yeah, so we actually built and uh, this is a good it's almost like a right back. Blue pen yeah, so we, we actually built and tested the, the entire initial round of the system um, once we started working with PCIe Flash entirely on Flash. And then we added the disks. Right? And so uh, what you effectively have on each of those microarrays is the Flash layer, right, which has metadata and a heap. Right? Um, you, when you build a flash structured storage system, it makes lots of sense to use a log. Uh, the problem with using a log, though, is that um, if you have hot and cold data being written at the same time, which you invariably do, right, as you write forward in the log, you're going to overwrite stuff and delete stuff. And so you end up with the back of your log kind of looking like this. Right? And so you have to do garbage collection to pull this data up to the front of the log. Right? And that ends up being problematic because under heavy load you end up having to take two accesses for every new access basically. Um, and so w we take advantage of a log structure for our, uh, for our metadata writeout, but we actually pull off data into a separate heap. We manage the flash kind of like a hybrid between flash and RAM. Right? So we have this heap that stores longer lived data. And we write the, the object metadata to this log, we put the stuff in the heap there. The way the disks get added is effectively as right. So these are just extra heaps, right? So you can kind of think of this as an object storage right file system layout that uses different storage media under a single system. Right? There's no file system that we're running on top of. We're not running on top of ext or zfs or something. We've written to the to the media. Um, so you absorb reason writes here, right? You aggregate and shelf out cold data. The cold data doesn't have to be sequential on disk, right? You can make it temporally correlated data, right? So if you see a bunch of stuff accessed together, you can ship that out and ship it back in together. Okay, so do you keep temperature metadata on the flash or on all the data? Um, everything. Okay, yeah, so it's tearing. So I mean, the, the heap is man managed LRU, is that? 
the, well, the, 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 the heap in Flash is effectively LRU at this point. Um, and we're basically piecewise moving in optimizations for it to make a load of work. Right. But, but you don't necessarily promote from disk to Flash on every access the way a cache would. That's right. That's right. <clears throat> I'm sorry. The read miss doesn't go directly, doesn't come in from disk right. to Flash? Right. A read miss, yeah, one miss doesn't promote a, doesn't necessarily promote an object. They're keeping, they're keeping access frequency metadata on everything. So if you miss once, you just read it from the disk, and then on the That's, nth miss, they promote. The the thing that actually ends up being more sensible on this, um, in in the at least in the um, analysis that we've done so far, is that you still run something that looks like an LRU, right top to bottom. Right. And so you have this long tail right, of accesses. If you look at your, your in-flash stuff, you get really, really high hit rates, right, and the hit rate falls off over yeah. time. Right? LRU right, in storage systems has largely been RAM over like, a crap load of disk, and so you've always been in this chunk of the, of the space. It's pretty hard to screw this up. Right? LRU does a good job. There's things like Arc and Car that do a better job. They like, avoid little weirdnesses, right, like sequential accesses. Um, but one of the big problems in designing for, for Flash, right, and tiering is that you end up with a whole bunch of memory out in this range. And like I said earlier, this ends up being like 20 hours between access, right? You're not getting good value out of the memory at this point. And so one of the things that is helpful here is to anticipate accesses, right, to try and bring it in early, right, because demand-based population doesn't work. But there are other tricks that work well. One of the things that, that we do is still use an LRU, but sometimes promote data into the top of the LRU, right, as you would traditionally do, sometimes bring it into the bottom, right? So you still get locality of access, but you quickly lose the data. Oh, okay, right? so, so you, so you, so you on, can bring it in. So right? on first read, it goes in at the tail. Exactly. And right. then? And then it falls off, right? So you, it's in the LRU for okay. the, the right. so like nearby so the, access. So the tail cycles very quickly. Yeah, exactly. Um, so there's a bunch of other sort That's, of interesting That's an interesting like approach. Yeah, sequential detect would do the same sort of thing, in my mind. Yeah. Um, Bring in, you'd prefetch all these in the lowest level, and then and you'd get rid of them as soon as they're done. Sometimes. Uh, the problem, uh, especially out in this range, is that uh, it, it may not be sequential accesses that you see. Right? So maybe a bunch of metadata in the super block or directory I know, right, and a bunch of data on disk or files yeah. spread over the place. They get access together. But you want to bring them in in a single like, bulk order <coughs> from the disk. Right, and leave them there just long enough to be accessed. And, yeah, but, you know, but this serves the same purpose as sequential detect in that when I run a yes. backup, the front end of the LRU doesn't get replaced that's right. That's because right. of the volume of Exactly, data. exactly. Um, that's certainly the intention. And how do you manage a different generation of the LRU? Because, okay, it's all virtualized and we understood it, but the next generation will be bigger and probably <coughs> more performant. Yeah, so that's an unbalanced cluster. Then. That's that's right. So I mean, the system is already dealing with unbalanced problems between the flash and the disk, right? That's yeah, actually but it's like <coughs> <coughs> yeah, yeah. Um, the uh, the the placement logic that we have um, already factors in uh, disparities between capacity between nodes, right? And tries to do the right thing there. And we're actively working on on that stuff, right? We know that this is going to be a problem, um, and it just has to be something that we fix. Yeah, but you got a year or two before you actually start shipping the second next piece round. Of yeah, hardware. exactly. I mean, we're we're pretty, you know, it's. I, I invite you to go look at the density stuff that's happening on the on the server form factor side, right? The the density that we will get to <coughs> your routing commodity, right? It's going to be really. I'm excited, right, about about what this box is going to look like in two years. Right? It's going to be it's going to be a lot of a lot of stuff in very little space.